Jesus couldn't die the normal death of the Jews to be stoned. You see, Jesus, the Bible says, not a bone would be broken of him. Now, that's a prophecy, a remarkable prophecy in Psalms, because if the Jews were to kill Jesus, their method was to be stoned. They would pick up stones and they would cast them at the offending party until he was dead. If you got hit with rocks, you would definitely break a bone. But that couldn't happen. Not with Jesus. Jesus had to be persecuted and prosecuted by the Roman government so that he will go to a place called Calvary and suffer and die crucifixion. There will be no bones broken. And the Bible speaks about lifting the Son of Man up. This is the battlefield of Jesus Christ. The Jewish nation and the Roman nation. And that soldier was nailed to that cross. And he gave up the ghost. That's God. He gave up the ghost. God died. He died before the other men, the thieves, died. But the soldier died on the battlefield on Calvary about 33 A.D. And that made the world rejoice. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, hallelujah. It'd be almost like sending our men over to ISIS. And they kill one of our soldiers sorrily, disrespectfully. And they rejoice because they've killed the American soldier. And the press won't care. But Jesus is dead. Take him out of here and bury him, will you? Now see, Jesus has died according to the scriptures. The scriptures speak of how Jesus was to die, when he was to die, and everything that led up to that death he fulfilled. And he buried. As you would do with any dead man. But there's a problem. The Bible says that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of that belly of that whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now whether you believe it or not, Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited man's sin. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Three days and three nights later, Christ came out of that tomb alive and well. 400 people went witnessed the resurrected Christ. Along with his 11 disciples. And the women that followed him in the ministry. And when Christ came out of that tomb, the world war was over. He had the keys to death. He had the keys to hell. He got victory over the grave. You don't have the victory yet. And you will not get the victory without Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 What must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Oh, preacher, don't preach about hell. Don't be loud. And yet, if there was a house here burning on fire, and there were people in that building, you would yell, Fire! Get out! And I yell, there's a hell. And only Jesus Christ can get you out. You'll be a fool with someone burning. Hey, excuse me, get out. Excuse me. Hey, I don't want to offend you, but your house is on fire. You want to get out? Come on, please, get out. I'll be offended you try to put that much effort into trying to save my, myself getting out of a flame. Speak on the housetops, the Bible speaks, that Jesus saves. And the end of your war 
will come when you die. And where will you go? The only way to get to heaven. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're not going to approach God and say, God, I ate Jesus and I drank Jesus. That's not acceptable. God, I killed a hundred infidels in my time. That's not accepted by God. That's religion. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. There is no way to get to the Father except by the finished work of that soldier, Jesus Christ. That suffered and died. Now you may reject our veterans. Past, present, and future. I'm sorry you do. I'm sorry that the condition of our veterans are the way they are today. That they do not get the proper care at the veterans hospital. Like they should. Yet somebody with welfare gets better treatment than our armed soldiers. But besides the fact of, of our American veterans rejecting and defiling and cussing against the soldier Jesus Christ. The Bible says prepare to meet thy God. And the Bible also says in Matthew, uh, Romans 13... Vengeance is mine. I will repay. And that's God speaking. And if you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, imagine God telling you, go to hell. And there's nothing about it you can do. It won't be a, like a human saying, go to jail. It is God himself telling you to go to hell. Well, I was a good person. There are none good. No, not one. Oh, God, I went to this church. You mean that church is better than what Jesus Christ done? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Well, yes, you are. What you balance out, what you think you're going to go to heaven against what Jesus Christ has done, you think you are better than Jesus Christ. You would, no, you wouldn't, you would not dare say that openly, but that's what you're saying. Whatever you believe and trust in outside the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are saying that is better than Jesus. You've got some ego. You have got some nerve. That you think your religion is going to match against the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you something. God Almighty will not receive it. He will not take it. You must come to God by the shed blood of the land that take away the sin. And you are a sinner. And people go to hell because they had rejected the sin offering of Jesus Christ, the soldier. That's what we preach. We preach that Christ saves. We preach that there can be victory after death. We preach that Christ arose from the grave. No one else has. No one else has ever done what Jesus Christ has done. That, was, that is what makes Him God. You know what makes you man? You will not come out of that grave on your own power. 
You say that for your priest and for your religious leader. They will not come out of that grave. Well, read the Constitution. It says you got the right to speak. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. I get offended by the music that people play. So, I'm going to preach Jesus as much as you can get the music. And Jesus Christ is much better than the crap that comes out of these cars. Jesus Christ is much better than what comes out of these, these microphones at these stadiums. Because Jesus saves. I don't really care if you get offended. Because the Bible says you will be offended. And yet the Bible says preach the word. Be in season and out of season. I am doing exactly what God has proclaimed by his word. Preach the gospel. And you are doing exactly what God said the Bible would say you do. You're rejecting it. I can imagine you standing before God as a Christ rejected. I was offended at your word. God's going to say, tough. I ordained what he said. And I'll say it again. Jesus saves and only Jesus saves. And you need this message before you die. Because after you die, you can't do nothing. Once you're dead, that's it. This is a message that needs to be heard before you die. That Jesus saves. And for those that are saved, and those who have believed on Jesus Christ, it's a lovely message, it's a lovely thing that we do in their hearts. One day, saved or lost, you will stand before God. Now you're either going to be happy at this preaching and joyful, or you're going to be damned by this preaching. But I tell you one thing. You cannot tell God, I never heard, I never knew. When you hear the gospel that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures and you hear that only Jesus saves, that thou shalt believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. When you hear these words in your ears, You are without excuse when you don't adhere to what God says. And I'm offended at the preaching. Well, there are some people here that enjoy it. Stop thinking you're the only one. Individualism. Jesus Christ was an individual, a soldier. That suffered and died for you. And he didn't take any offense when he went to that cross. He went to that cross as God said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's God's attitude. God's attitude is you have a need for my son. And without my son, it would be damnation. Condemnation. Forever burning. When you have heard that Jesus saves and you will not adhere to it. And you can never tell God, I never knew.
And if I offend you, tough cookies. There's nowhere in this Bible say, oh, if they walk up to you and they're mad and they're offended and they're... Uh, go ahead and go home. There's nothing in the Bible. The Bible says preach the word. In season and out of season. And the days will come when they will not adhere to the word. They'll get themselves preachers that are itchy ears for themselves. Lovers of themselves. You can't even thank a soldier who is giving you freedom in America. I don't think you're going to thank God who can give you freedom from sin. I stand here on Memorial Day and when we see soldiers in uniforms in our ministry, we will thank them for their service. How many servicemen have you people thanked? How many police officers have you waved to when they pass by? Romans 13, respect the government. And when it comes to the soldier, Jesus Christ, you will not respect, you will not obey, and you will not follow. You will not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. So how on earth is God going to receive you into His holy kingdom? There is none good, no, not one, saith the Lord in the Bible. Romans 3. Goodness will not work for heaven. Religion will not work for heaven. Only by the Lamb of God which taken away the sin of the world. No Lamb, no blood, no entrance. Then try to tell God, I'm offended. As he laughs at you. Proverbs 1, Psalms 2. You know the Bible says... As far as you do not like this preaching, that Romans 10 says, God, I, God says, I love them feet. You can have the most despicable, smelly feet ever. And if it preaches the gospel, God loves it. God may give preachers that preach the gospel crowns. You know what he'll give you for rejecting the message that's being preached? The lake of fire that burns forever. See, your salvation into heaven rests upon what you do with Jesus Christ. And nothing else. And no one else. There is no noun or verb that can replace what Jesus Christ has done. Nothing. If it ain't Jesus Christ, it ain't salvation. The greatest soldier that ever got victory was born in a manger in Bethlehem and grew up and suffered and died upon Calvary. And the victory came from the grave when he came out three days later. That soldier is seated at the right hand of God the Father today right now. And God is more pleased at the preaching right now than any barbecue, any parade, anything that you're going to do this Memorial Day weekend that does not include Jesus Christ.
Whatever you do any day of the week, if it's not Jesus Christ, God's not approved. But when a man steps out and testifies of the saving grace of Jesus Christ, that's God approved. That pleases God. When a man comes to know Jesus Christ as his Savior, the Bible speaks about the angels rejoicing in heaven. The angels ain't going to rejoice over your cake party. That's filth. But when you lift up Jesus Christ, there is glory in heaven. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Including your stubborn knees. I don't care you get offended. God doesn't. Go all the world and preach that Jesus died according to the scriptures. And that he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Go ye and preach that. And guess what? The Bible said. They will be offended. They will rebuke. They will scorn. But keep preaching. Until I come and take you home. The greatest soldier ever to be is Jesus Christ. If you reject that soldier, it's damnation. It will be the end of your eternal life by rejecting this soldier, Jesus Christ. You will burn in hell for trusting in anything or nothing besides Jesus Christ. Eternal life without Jesus Christ is hell. Life begins at Calvary. A Christian is born again at the empty tomb. Life begins at Calvary. A new Christian is born at the empty tomb. One day you'll thank God for this message or one day you'll be sorry for rejecting the message. You can have life through Jesus or the wrath of God without Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.